Mesa football once again does not make the playoffs. Martin's team once again disappoints. Historically, we haven't been a strong program. We haven't been in the playoff conversation. Martin fired. Who will be Mesa's new head coach? Mesa hires Tremaine Jackson as its new head coach. Jackson coached the defensive line at Division I Texas State for two seasons. He's never been a head coach. How can he possibly be ready to get this team to a championship level? He is the first black head coach in Mesa's history. Is he ready for that responsibility? Jackson's first season derailed by the coronavirus, yet hope is there as the team finishes 2-1. and one. The plan is to go 5-0. and oh. If they add a sixth game, the plan is to go 6-0. and oh. And if they add eight more, the plan is to go 14-0. Oh. At the 10, the 5, touchdown Mesa! Mesa's third straight victory, and Tremaine Jackson is fired up! We're going to bring the championship back here outright. He's got this team looking better than they have ever before. This is ridiculous! A big matchup with Mines this week as they are the number three team and Mesa are massive underdogs. Can he do it? Is he good is enough? Is team ready to play at a championship level? He define what dog is. It's discipline, obedience, and grit. That's what it takes to be one of us. It's what we're about now. Dog mentality. The dog mentality. It's a dog mentality for us. You know, we got a lot of guys, man. I just got off the practice field and we're catching balls and I'm, I'm finally looking at guys and going, man, we, we might have a chance if we can stay healthy and do some things. So i um, really excited about this team overall. Yeah, I think Carson's done a great job of being a Maverick. New quarterback Karst Hunter has gotten better and better each week. You can see Tremaine Jackson's impact on him as a player. Man, he's the golden child. I call him my baby. Take care of my baby. I want to make sure we protect the baby. Coach Jack's coaching style is uh, unique. Hey, be firm! Be firm! Be firm right here! Pants down! Uh, uh, he's a energetic guy. He... Hey, energy and enthusiasm right here! Well, let's talk about one of those offensive stars, Derek Holmes, converted wide receiver to running back. What does it mean to you to have that type of player on your team? Man, it's, it's like a creative player on Matt, and he's, he's definitely one you want. He's a smaller guy, but he plays extremely big, and he's really explosive, and so it's fun to watch him play. Not one, not two, not three, but four. Count them, four touchdowns for Derek Holmes. Derek Holmes is like lightning in a bottle. Coach Tremaine Jackson, he's one of a kind, great energy, he's a leader, and he shows us the, uh, the way, you know, he lives by the dog mentality. That's what I like. We're bigger than most. We're bigger than most. We're bigger than most. Hey, good job. Keep them pants down even more. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Good job. Three now, three now. Good job. That's it right there. Right there. Hey. There you go, big daddy. Kalen Keenan. I feel like he's undersized um, and, and he's underestimated, but he's probably the best player on the O-line, on any offensive line. I'm glad that he's our center and on our football team. Just another dominant performance up front by Kalen Keenan. Coach Jack's coaching style, uh, I'd say up close, personal. Hold on, Jack. We had a lot of talent, I think uh, more talent than anyone in the conference, and I, I think we knew that. Uh, I was just uncertain because when you bring in a lot of new guys, it's hard to have a team culture, you know? And uh, that I was uncertain about whether we were going to be able to not necessarily win games, but come together and stay together, you know, eight, ten games down the road. This just in breaking news. Four police officers fired after an act that can only be described as police brutality after one officer kneeled on a man's neck in the street. The man has been identified as George Floyd. The words, I can't breathe, echo through Minneapolis tonight. Protests and riots spread across the U.S. as citizens look not only for justice for George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and all those affected by police brutality, but also for real change to happen as civil and social injustice must be addressed in today's society. You know, when I saw that, it made me, one, realize that I felt that same pressure going throughout my life on my neck um, just growing up.
Secondly, being in a new place, you wonder if that can happen to you. Yeah. Uh, but more so, I wondered and I feared that maybe that, that could happen to one of my players. During the peak, uh, it helped me realize uh, all the awareness that the world still didn't have and all the awareness we need to bring to the world. And it just showed me that uh, no matter the race or the color, we all can come together. And I feel like Coach Jack helped us understand that as a team. And I feel like it just brought more awareness. You know, I saw recently um, a post, I think it was on Twitter, that um, the football team, I think you got them to register mm -hmm. for this year's election. Talk, talk to us about that. Share yeah, that. so when we started, you know, with, with everything that started happening in our country beginning in the summer, um, we, we started teaching our players what voice they really have. And that is bigger than just football. Uh, you're going to be a young man in the community and you've got a voice in everything that you want to have a voice in. And the way that you have a voice in state and local issues or national issues is to vote. And about two weeks ago, we got that all done for everybody on the team, coaches included. I, I know the team came closer together for sure. Um, I mean, the thing about football is football, uh, I mean, there's 130 guys on our roster in season and not everyone's going to have the same political views. Uh, but I, as a team, I think we really bonded together and uh, I mean stood with our black teammates. This team wanted to address it in going out to play football together and winning. And they told me, they said, Coach, we don't want to do anything but go out and show people how people from different nationalities and cultures can come together and work toward a common goal, which is winning. So that's what we wanted to do. Well, they certainly put on a show for Maverick Nation in game one that I can confidently say was the most exciting football game any of us have experienced here at Mesa. Over 500 yards of offense again. We have never seen anything quite like this. Mesa is absolutely electric. First loss of the season, now 3-1 against CSU Pueblo in a double overtime. How will they respond? We were mad and we were coming for the rest of the league. Mesa has just blown out Adam State 49 to 12. Mesa destroys another team. Talking about your absolutely dominant win over Port Lewis, 55 to three. What was the biggest factor in that win for you guys? Yeah, I thought we put a complete game together. We're really proud of our kids. I thought they played extremely hard. They played us for homecoming. I think our program wanted to let put people on notice that you don't play the Mesa Mavericks for homecoming. Mesa will play against number three ranked Colorado School of Mines. What is the mindset going into this week to beat this top team? Yeah, we play for the Nikos Cup. Uh, we want the cup. And so that's kind of been our motto. Anytime there's a trophy or something on the line, we want to compete for it. Mines is no joke. They've beaten Mesa eight out of the last 11 times, and they've outscored them 128 to 51 in the last two games. I felt like we had a chance to win and do something nobody thought we could do. Coming off, we won two in a row on a win streak, so I felt like we was ready, we was focused. You can tell the energy was different, and everybody wanted to prove to the world that we the best. It's go time. <laughs> You're down 21 to 16. What are you telling your team to make sure that you guys keep fighting to come out with that victory? Um, like, man, we just need to score. I knew there was a lot of game left, um, and we all did. Football is a crazy game played by inches, and you never know what could happen. But listen, you came back, you redeemed yourself. If we stick together as one, we can be great. All we need is everybody to pull together, do what you're supposed to do. We'll walk out and hit a chance. Yes, sir. That's all we need. You good on that? Yes, sir. Is this team ready to play at a championship level? Come on! Come on! Touchdown Mavericks! Mesa has come all the way back to take the lead over Mines. Matoka steps up. This is Mines' last chance. Looking to throw, running out of time, throws to the back of the end zone. 